Welcome back to another tutorial. This week we have a cute Toy Story inspired wedding cake. This bottom tier is a 10 inch round covered in white paste. As always, all previous steps are in the description box. The cake is secured to the drum with ganache and we are now covering the board in more white using the toilet seat method, which is also linked below. We are building the whole thing before continuing to decorate, so place your supports in the centre and cut all others to the same height. The cake above this is going to be 8 inch, so I'm using 8 supports around the outside and one in the middle. To stick your cakes together you can use ganache, melted chocolate or royal icing. This one is melted chocolate as I had run out of ganache and you'll see why I prefer the ganache in a second. Carefully place your 8 inch cake on top, which is the only one covered in a pale baby blue. Next up is a 6 inch cake, so it's 6 supports around the outside and one in the middle. More melted chocolate and a covered 6 inch cake on top in white. Yep, melted chocolate is a tad runnier than ganache and can often leave a little trail as you pull the knife out. Luckily you can clean it up with a damp paintbrush, but I do prefer ganache. And finally, it's topped with another white 4 inch cake and more chocolate. So you should have a white 4 inch, a white 6 inch, a blue 8 inch and a white 10 inch. Measure the circumference of the bottom tier. Mine comes to 83 centimetres. Punch in your measurement on a calculator and then divide it by how many scallop shapes you want. I'm going for 6. This tells me each scallop needs to be 13.8 centimetres to go around almost seamlessly. With an A4 sheet of paper, mark out your 13.8 centimetres at the top and the bottom and then join them up. Now find a circle. Drums come in handy for this. As you can see, this curve is quite tight so the points are really deep on each end. It creates a quite harsh arc shape. Moving it up doesn't work, as then the top edge is very shallow. What's needed is a bigger circle. That creates a smoother arc. Now we have a good size on the top and not huge points on the edges. From the top of your 13.8cm column, mark two equal points. They can be anything you like. I'm going for just over 5cm. Now line your circle up with these two new points and this ensures your arc is central. Each point should match to create this shape. Now cut out your template. Dampen all the top edge of the bottom tier and a small band no deeper than the smallest part of your template around the sides. Now roll out the baby blue just like you would for the toilet seat method and lay this all across the top edge. It can be tricky but move along the edge securing it and manoeuvring it flush as you go. You can smooth it out with a smedger too if it helps. Now secure the sides and push the pleats out as low as you can get them. Now pin your template across the top edge with acupuncture needles and with a Dresden tool mark along the arch. Also mark the ends so it makes it easier for you to line the next template up. Now take off the template and line it up for the next one. You can continue to pin it if you like but I'm just holding it in place. Make sure you do a few on each side so that you end at the back. It doesn't always match up. Here you can see a slight gap which we can easily fix by joining it up. Then go back over your lines but this time with a scalpel. Once it's all cut, dampen underneath the points to stick them down.
This design element was inspired by Jessie's shirt, which has edging. So we're going to dampen across the bottom with water and roll out a long, continuous string of white paste. Just follow the shape, sticking it down as you go. To get Woody in there, we are adding some ropes from Woody's Roundup. This mould doesn't seem to have a brand name on it, but if I find it, I shall leave it linked below. It has two sizes and we're going to use the larger one. For this, I've added some Tylo powder to the white paste to make it much stiffer. It's much easier to use in moulds. Dust the cavity with icing sugar and roll out a chunky sausage of paste. Lay this on top and push it right down. It actually opens up a bit inside the mould, so pinch the paste to a point and give it a further push down until it fills all the areas. With a sharp knife, cut from the inside to the outer edge, removing all the excess. Rub the edges clean and flex the mould to loosen it. Flip it over and gently peel it back. If you've dusted it enough and have enough Tylo powder in, it should pop straight out. Stick them all around the bottom tier with water, merging the joins the best you can and do the same around the base of the top tier. To get Buzz Lightyear in, we are creating his famous quote. I've typed it in using a font from the computer. You can download new ones from dafont.com, which I'll leave links below. To add a bit of flair, I've taken my drawing tool and I've added a few flicks and curls. I'm using Photoshop, but you can draw in Microsoft Paint and other programs similar. I added a few stars and once I was happy, I took my circle of greaseproof paper that was cut to the height of my six inch tier, so I know it will fit. Trace over the letters with a pencil until you have something like this. As the paper was trimmed to size, it makes it easier to scale the text to the right size. Pin this into place on the front and go over your letters in either pencil or a Dresden tool to leave an impression underneath. Pulling out my new little shot glasses again, they come in handy for water pots or mixing paints. In this one, I have my favourite gold and I'm adding lemon extract to create a paint. Take a fine paintbrush and simply follow your markings, just like a colouring book. For the stars, I have a tiny plunger cutter which came as a set of three. I've cut out the smallest ones and stuck them around the quart. I decided to leave them white, as I thought the white on white texture looked pretty good. For the iconic cloud wallpaper, I've rolled out some white paste using my pasta machine so that they are all the same thickness. If you already have a cloud cutter, you can adapt it. I have one here by a company called Not Just Cakes by Annie. Cut out your cloud and then using a rolling pin and a scalpel, cut and manipulate bits to mimic the Toy Story ones. Or, if you prefer, you can trace one onto paper, lay it over the paste, imprint it on with a Dresden tool and hand cut them. You're going to need quite a few. Stick them all over the baby blue tier with water. Time for another template. This time I traced this scallop shape from an image on Google and I just zoomed in until it was the size I wanted. Roll out yet more white paste. This has a little Tylo powder added, making sure the piece is long enough to wrap around your four inch cake. Cut out the hump shapes, leaving the top of the paste as it is. Roll it up gently so it's easier to lift without stretching it. Dampen around the whole top edge of your four inch and slowly unravel your scallops. Just concentrate on getting your scallops placed where you want them and just ignore the top. Stick them down with water and then run your scalpel across the top edge, holding the blade straight. 
Finally, punch out circles in each hump and you'll see a tiny little bit of bore peep emerge in the way of her lacy bloomers. For the aliens, I've got some Renshaw's Atlantic Blue that I've added some Tylo powder to and I'm rolling it so it tapers at both ends but stays chunky in the middle. Flatten it a little and chop the top and bottoms flat. Marking a small line on the bottom for legs. Don't forget you'll need two of everything. With a darker blue, roll out a fat teardrop and chop it in half. Tap these into chunky yet slightly pointed shoes. Place these almost back to back and press the body down onto them. In the same blue, cut out a thin strip for his belt and a small rectangle for the front of it. At this point we can secure him into position on the ledge of the bottom tier, holding him with a kebab stick and leaving enough above for the head. The arms are short sausages cut at an angle and secured to the body with water. Bend it and flatten the wrist part against the chest area. Unfortunately, Renshaws have stopped making my favourite lime green but you can make it by mixing together yellow paste with a touch of Lincoln green paste. Cut out a notch from the hand to create a thumb, then cut the longer part into two fingers. Easiest hands ever. Stick these against the body with the fingers facing slightly outwards. Before placing on a head, he needs a rim of purple paste for a collar. Roll his lime green head into a rough rugby ball shape and flatten it. Marking a wide smile across the bottom and then with the larger end of the tool, pull in an open mouth. Flick it up slightly as you go. Fill this gap with black paste and using a ball tool, start adding eye sockets, three of them. Fill each one with a ball of white paste and flatten it out. Pupils and catch lights are always done in the same way, black balls and then smaller white ones. Lower the head down the kebab stick and don't forget his little friend on the other side. His ears are teardrops, flattened and slightly hollowed out. Stick them to either side of his head. His little antennae, if that's even what you call it on an alien, is supported by a small piece of wire. It's fiddly, but it can be done. Slowly feed a thin string of paste down the wire until it hits the head. Finally, top it with a tiny flattened disc. Ooh, look, two of them. Didn't I tell you those Easter polystyrene eggs would come in handy? They are great for bodies, like Mr and Mrs Potato Head. They keep them nice and lightweight so the spuds don't get flat bums due to gravity. This colour was made by mixing orange with white and a touch of brown. Push the egg inside the paste, gathering it up around it. It's a little harder to roll an egg than it is a ball, but keep at it and the seams will soon disappear. Now we want a slight potato shape, so run your fingers part way up so the bottom is bigger than the top. Stick some cocktail sticks up inside the egg for leg supports. I decided to swap out one of the legs on each potato for a longer kebab stick. Make the swap on the inner legs for ease of inserting. Mr. Potato Head's shoes start as a ball of dark blue paste cut in half and then a thin string of the same colour to line the bottoms. Before placing it on, mark in some stripes on either side of the shoe. Mark in a box shape with crisscross laces. Now 
dampen the tops and slide each shoe down a support. Pop Mr Potato Head on top of the cake, making sure there's room for his missus. I apologise for the angle, it was a pretty tall cake. Mrs Potato Head fits on snugly beside him in red pointy shoes, made the same way as the aliens. The features are different, so Mr Potato Head has a little white semicircle for a smile, which is lined in a string of red. Put the join on the flat top, as this will be hidden with a moustache. Mrs Potato Head is a small banana shape of red paste, scored through the centre. The Mr's nose is a teardrop of pale orange, with two small balls added on either side for nostrils. And his Mrs has a slightly daintier nose, but in pink. Mark and pinch in the nostrils so it's smaller. The moustache is a black tapered sausage laid over the mouth and scored with a Dresden tool. I decided to add a line across the white for his teeth. Two large white ovals make eyes and topped with tiny tapered sausages for eyelids. Add pupils and catch lights and small sausages of black for eyebrows. His hat is a black ball chopped in half and placed on his head. Line it around the bottom with a strip of black paste to make the brim. Do the same for his missus but add purple lids for eyeshadow. Ears are done in pink and are hollowed out circles. Mr Potato Head has larger, more oval ears, while Mrs Potato Head has smaller, circular ones, with a yellow ball for an earring. Hands start as flattened white circles with a notch cut out, and then separated into just three fingers. Round each one out and stick them into position with water. A flattened ball of paste below the hand is like a cuff of a glove and then it's followed by a string of paste for an arm. Pleat a flat white rectangle of white paste for a veil and stick this on top of the head, pulling the veil into the shape you want. Finish off the top seam with three white daisies, just like the ones on her usual hat. Don't forget her little eyelashes, just painted on with black paint by Rainbow Dust. And we're done. It's a bit of a beast of a cake, and very, very heavy. But we got in Mr and Mrs Potato Head, Bo Peep, Buzz, Woody, Aliens and Jessie. Hope you found some of the elements in this video useful. If you were having a Toy Story cake, which characters would you have on it? I think I'd need the Barbie leg fishing line from the first movie. Or maybe the baby head Meccano leg spider claw. As always, thanks for watching and if you've just discovered me, hit that subscribe button to see new tutorials every Tuesday and behind the scenes vlogs and deliveries every other Thursday. Thanks guys, see you next week.